The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 22nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance where uh, every set of circumstance. Well, I've sort of had a little bit of brain fart out there um, that the markets will toss at us or the world will toss at us. But right now, what we're going to do today is we're going to go see what the uh, what the uh, markets are uh, uh, suggesting, what they're doing out there. Boy, I really screwed that up, but that's OK. I know you guys will cut me just a little bit of slack out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started. I'd love to hear from you. You can't give us a call. I believe the phone lines are still down, but you most certainly can send me an email and send that out to Steve at TFN.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we begin our day right now with all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 118, S&P 15, NASDAQ 24, Russell's down uh, about 10 points, 37 for the semis, 27 points for the trannies. Uh, you've got uh, gold trading up 19 bucks, silver's up 72 pennies, natural gas is flat, 30-year treasury is basically down five ticks, so it's flat out there, and uh, light sweet crude is up a buck 22, it's less than 2% of a move to the upside trade out at 71.27 out there. Now, our our leaders in the clubhouse, dollar-wise, are Herc Holdings, up about $18 or 11%. iRhythm Technologies, 12 bucks, 19%. Charter Communications, about 12 bucks or 4%. Mueller Industries or Mueller Industries, up 10 bucks, 14%. Philip Morris is up almost $10. That's an 8% move. Our shakers to the downside, led by Lockheed Martin, up 32 bucks, 5%. MedPace Holdings, about 30 bucks, 8%. Genuine Auto parts down uh, 25 and change. That's an 18% move. Moody's is down 18, nearly 4%. And GE Aerospace down $16. That is also an 8% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, what I want to look at is what you want to look at. So let's begin our day by taking a look at New York Stock Exchange. It's advanced decline oscillator. That is a panel number three coming from the top. You can see right now printed out at minus 119. Now, I am uh, not going to be able to host shows tomorrow through Friday. I have a, a pre-planned uh, a trip, vacation, or what have you. So I uh, won't be able to do that. So what you want to do, to the extent that you can, may, I think maybe Peter in the den might be tracking the advanced client oscillator. If it gets down to the 150 level out there, that's telling us that we have achieved oversold conditions. Not until then. It's got to get down to that 150 level. And at that point in time, that's when you start looking for a bounce or a bottom. The last time we were down below minus 150, well, that was right here on the trading day of uh, August the 5th. And August the 5th was a pretty significant bottom out there. So you want to watch that. We aren't there yet. Just something to observe. If we take a look at um, the spot fix index, uh, here we can see that uh, we, we'll see it in a moment. We can see that price is trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is 1835. We're trading 1881 out there. If we get below and close below and stay below 1835, at least at this point, that's the that's the uh, price level. It may change by pennies or what have you. But if we do get below that 50-day exponential moving average for the spot fix, we likely continue to rally. And the ES the ES mini continues move it, its move up to the 6012 level out there. Right now, at this moment in time, we do have the ES mini that is struggling. 
at its perigee pivot point. That perigee pivot point is at 58.77. These are great, short, for, for, first, they're great levels to observe how price reacts. They typically I, are levels that identify support and resistance. In fact, we can see the first time first time down to test that level was at uh, 2030 on, Oct on October 17th. That most certainly led to a rally back up towards its uh, swing previous swing point high out there. But we sliced through it like butter yesterday, but we did that for one bar. We did that at 11 o'clock, and then we shot right back above it, suggesting we had a false breakdown at that stage. Well, we closed below it again this morning at about 4.30. This is about an hour after uh, the European markets uh, opened up out there, and we've been below it for more than a bar. But right now, price is taking on that level. We're trading just above it at 58.77. we got another 19 minutes left in this trading session, this trading, this 30 bar 30 minute bar, I should say. And if we do close about 58.77, that's a positive. The NQ is stronger than the ES with regard to its perigee pivot point. Has never gotten down there. What we see out here is a series of higher lows and higher highs out here. Um, so that's important to watch. Uh, our perigee pivot point not in play for anything else that we're taking a look at. So let's move on and take a look. Now, you know, as long as we're here, um, just so I don't uh, screw up, which is, you know, kind of hard for me not to do, uh, screw up in, uh, in changing charts back and forth. Although we're not going to completely go into uh, gold at this moment, we will most certainly do that during the show. But if we do take a look at well, first, let's take a look at the Dow. So the Dow priced in other major currencies. We can see that new all time highs were formed. Uh, last week out there and in all currencies we're trading a bit lower out here but what we want to do and understand with regard to the Dow um, is uh, how many days of a retracement do we have out there in other words are we just seeing knee-jerk reaction bottom type signals form out here if we take a look at the S&P 500 price in the major currencies we made new all-time highs yesterday as you know with regard to uh, price in in uh, US dollars also new all-time highs yesterday in Corona oh, I'm sorry that was euros was um, was a yesterday, not in U.S. dollars. Great British pound about four days ago. The Australian dollar, the same thing. Um, Swiss franc, the same thing. The uh, Chinese one, about the same thing. So this says, okay, uh, we got all these currencies that have started to pull back, but now what we have to do is try to identify what's the pattern associated with that, and that could just simply be a two to four day pullback out there. We take a look at um, how the S&P is trading inside the uh, currencies in the Middle East out there. Why are we looking at the Middle East right now? Because there we definitely have a war that is going on, likely going to uh, escalate, not de-escalate. And if we take a look at how the S&P is trading with regard to the Iranian real out there, well, they uh, they may not, they may say, they may claim death to America out there, but they are saying uh, long live the, uh, the S&P 500 out there. That's one place that they're looking at that is... Uh, uh, is trying to uh, protect their capital. If we take a look at Goldilocks, I had mentioned gold. Here's gold in the major currencies. We're at new all-time highs today in terms of U.S. dollars, euros, yen, pounds, Canadian loonie, Swiss corona, uh, uh, sweet, uh, uh, Swedish corona, Swiss francs, Chinese yuan, and the Australian dollars. Folks, we have a global rally going on inside this market. And even though we're going to talk about TD9 count top patterns and so forth, they may not just give a darn about that because capital is fleeing into these areas, which is very typical, especially during Middle Eastern issues out here. If we take a look at, uh, this is gold priced in the major currency, so new all-time highs in the dollar. Oh, this is still, I'm sorry, I, I thought I changed, I did not. What was it? Oh no, I'm sorry, I did. We talked about the major currencies. Oops, here is the, uh, here's gold trade in, in all of those country currencies that are inside the Middle East dealing with what's going on there. All new time highs today. So what this tells us is we have buyers across the globe. Everybody you know and don't know in essence is buying gold. At some point in time that comes to an end and we do have a warning signal being those TD9 count tops, but they just not, might not, this just might not be the right time for a top. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So let me do this first. I'm going to change over to the uh, white background screens. I'm going to give you a feel for what to watch uh, today. So we're going to shift off of this chart here in a, a moment. We're going to go actually take a look at the NQs uh, to start uh, to start that. And what I want to share with you is really we're trading with inside a range. And that range has been established by the 60-minute uh, time frame chart. And it's a TD9 count breakout level. That's a 2358.75. This level has been tested a couple of different times. There's actually a TD9 count bottom uh, that formed at 8 o'clock in the morning back on October 21st. It would be a closed blow that low specifically. That low is 2343.75. That would then have us lead to lower price. Now, the consol it's really a consolidation between these levels. So you're going to have also a measured move. In essence, whichever side of this level breaks, you're going to see a move to the downside. Now you're going to move. You can for the consolidation breakout. You can move your levels up, and I would say even as high as um, 2546. And then for the low, you're basically at the 2346 out here. But right now, we can take a look at the breakout levels, held the support, and the resistance level. The TD9 count breakdown level is holding as resistance at this point in time. Yes, we had a couple of closes above those levels. Looked like we were going to break out, but we pulled back inside of it. So watch the uh, 20. 516 and a quarter level and 2358.75. We got that consolidation. Now, we have that consolidation not just amongst the NQ out here, uh, a similar set of charts. Let's go take a look at the 60 minute time frame charts for each of the equity future contracts out here. Now we've got those up on our screen. You'll see a TD9 count bottom that is in place here for the ES Mini. So in the ES Mini, that's the real key level of support. It's already been tested a couple times this morning. Again, we're looking at the 60-minute time frame charts. But a close below 58.63.75, so that's kind of our bottom floor threshold at this stage here. If price closed below that, we head lower. But like to the upside here, at prices trade above profile, 
uh, resistance right now. Uh, this is suggesting that we head up to the 58.96 level. Now, price is at a area where you could say 58.83.50, which is normally support or would have been support, could be resistance. So maybe that's the case. But let's just say if you do get above 58.83.50, 58.96 is in the card. So that's the upside and the downside. And then lastly, we have a TD9 count bottom pattern inside the Dow Equity Future contract. We also have a road momentum indicator bottom. Now, this is telling us that price, let me just expand out the chart here. This is communicating to you and I that price is going to go target its breakdown level. 43,154. Now that's the area. If you are in the mode of shorting out here because you believe the markets are going to head lower, well, that would most certainly be a spot to be able to take a look at. But this, I'm sorry, this is uh, yeah, this is for the Dow Equity Future contract. Now, if price closed about 43,154, we head higher, higher to where I'd really want to pull out the other uh, eight panel. You know, take a look at an eight panel intraday set of charts for the Dow in order to do that. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, just not playing in this game out here. So it's the ES, the NQ, and the YM that have those patterns from an intraday standpoint, but I believe they are worth watching out here. Um, we may see just really a lot of sideways consolidation as we head into the uh, last two weeks here of the election uh, process. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity markets. We can look at more stuff, but that really kind of sums it up for you. Let's go take a look at some of the requests that have come in. The first one coming in from Dude, and thank you to each of you who've already put in requests. Would love many more. Haven't had a chance to take a look at the phone out there, my, e my email, but I'll certainly do that during that next break. But let's start off taking a look at PRQR. This is for Dude inside the Tiger's Den. So the interesting thing here, Dude, is if we take a look at the uh, chart, on the right-hand side, the monthly time frame chart, you're going to see that this has been trading in a consolidation. And even though it looked like we were in a gigantic breakout mode, really it's the top of that consolidation right now that, in fact, is holding. When we take a look at the daily time frame chart, there's a new profile that formed yesterday. That new profile is gigantic. It is ginormous. What I mean by that is the top of the profile is 434. The bottom's at 206. That's a 50% haircut out there. So that's something to be paying attention to. Why? Because the top is 434. The center is 405. We are trading right now at uh, 386. Typically, when you close below, and I don't know where we're going to close today, but when you close below the center of a bear structured profile, it tells you you're going to go test support. Now, usually that support level would be the bottom of profile 206. That's not what I'm saying just yet. Even though I just said that, what I'm saying is that price is going to go test support. And it turns out support is now that green oscillator and change line. Currently printed at 319, that's going to, as price moves lower, that will drop by pennies or what have you. But that's the area for you to be watching. That's where you're going to get the next release of information or likely to. The, uh, the, the caveat to that is if we take a look at PRQR and take a look at this will be day number three to the downside, assuming it does finish to the downside out here. Um, and, you know, typically you wouldn't get in a bull market. You typically would not get more than a four consecutive day pullback out there. So pay attention to that. Again, it won't be here uh, tomorrow, Thursday or Friday out there. But at least I can give you the, <laughs> excuse me, the guidelines to take a look at and pay attention to. The weekly chart. Um, I don't really have anything out here to share with you. I do see wave number four that was established last week. We've learned from Basel that typically the market will do something after that fourth wave does not mean that it's a top necessarily. And that's not what I'm calling because I don't have that signal per se. But we do have that new daily profile to pay attention to help guide us. And then we have those consecutive moves to the downside to also watch. So do it. Hope that helps you out. As always, thanks for your request. Let's go to our next request. It wasn't really a next request. Stevie got a little out of order. My apology to to Jambalaya, but we'll get to yours here momentarily. And this is from Ron inside the Tiger's Den as well. He wanted to take a look at high-grade copper. So we look at the December contract, formed a nice TD9 count bottom, four trading sessions ago, completed that pattern three trading sessions ago. And now what price has done is traded up into both its sell zone, the top of uh, which is between 441 and 446, as well as uh, finding resistance at that oscillator and change line. So you got a bottom with prices consolidating with inside its profiles, 431 to 446. Whichever side breaks, suggest we move in that direction. To the downside, you'd have to close below 4.274 because that's a TD9 count breakout level to suggest that we're going to head lower. If we look at the weekly 
time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart uh, completed bar number nine last week, but it's not a TD9 count top because the high is a high of bar number seven out there. Price is trading into potential support. That's the top of its weekly profile, and that's at uh, the level of 4.373. So if price were to close below that, that would suggest we head back to test that TD9 count low, perhaps. Uh, the, the center of the weekly profile, which is where a counter trend move would end, would be at the $4.23 level. But I'm not making that call because the weekly uh, resistance level or support area, the top of its profile, is in fact holding. So hope that helps you out, uh, Ron. Thanks so much for your request as well. Now to Jambalaya's request inside the Tiger's Den. And the first was to take a look at ticker symbol LEU. And uh, Jam is looking for more of a retracement in order to add to his position, I believe. So we take a look at these charts out here. The daily time frame chart, what I don't see is any kind of a topping pattern. I don't see a TD9 count top. I don't see a Rosemont Dimindicator top. I don't even see a sell the D point top. Now, you may get more pullback out here. We are, you know, we, 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 we pierced through yesterday's low. We're not trading below that just now. If you would ask me, where is the area, because we don't have a top on a daily time frame, where you would want to consider adding on a daily time frame, it would be a test of that oscillator and change line jam. And that's at the 80, 89 area. You know that number is going to go up and down a, a, a few points or what have you. Uh, but, uh, but you've got the general area. I don't see a top on the uh, weekly time frame chart. If it did generate a bearish reversal candle, we'd have that. And no top on the monthly. So your place to add is in the 80-88-ish range out there. Hope that helps you out. And we'll go to your next request as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds' investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's move on to our next request coming from Jambalaya inside our Tiger's Den. He's looking for more of a retracement in ticker symbol UEC. We can see that UEC looks like it's going to confirm a seventh wave top out there. That is letter G on my screen. It's also got the number seven on it. <laughs> Just a coincidental, if there are coincidences in life out here. So you've got that top. In essence, that looks like it's in play, Jambalaya, and you're looking to be able to add to your position. Well, the first spot that you could consider adding was at this morning's uh, low at 791. Uh, I don't know if we actually got to 791. It got to 790 out there, which was a test of that green oscillator and change line. So right now, the signal is neutral. But let's assume you want to wait a bit more. You want to see if you get more of a pullback than just this one-day retracement out here. The area that I would be watching would be between 665 and 687 because this was a bearish structure profile we've been above it for more than two consecutive days out there that would be a nice place to add now in the case of the weekly time frame chart last week we took out its a uh, wave seven top we took out its prior swing point from the uh, february of 2024 level out there the high on that was at 834 we closed above it last week we closed last week at 846 77 million shares were traded last week versus 54 million shares so that level has been taken out with volume however we're trading back below it right now maybe because of that wave seven top on the daily time frame but you really do have a breakout message that's uh, going on inside the weekly time frame chart let's just kind of leave the weekly out of the equation with regard to retracements and instead just focus on the daily if we can on a monthly time frame chart um, it's also trying to take out a Roachman Dominicator top, TD9 count top, from February of 2024. Needs that close at the end of the month above $8.34. So that's what I see when I take a look at UEC. Jim, I hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for assisting by putting in some requests. And I want to thank everybody for doing that, especially today. You're keeping my mind singularly focused, which is a very good thing. Because we don't want Stevie, the Weeper Roads, to show up during the show out here. So if we go take a look at Tesla, this is for a long position for Pearl inside the tiger's den you know we've got a nice td9 count top that formed out here back on september 30th and right now we have price trading below the bottom of its daily profile this is a bullish structured profile and a close today below 215.73 we're at 216.29 right now that's going to suggest lower price now what pattern can we put out here i'm just going to check it on my other screen when i say check it what I mean here is I don't know if there was enough of a retracement to really say there's an A to B equals CD pattern. But Stevie's going to find out. I'm not going to do this until I'm certain that we've got that. And, uh, yeah, we do. Perfect. So the A to B point out here, I'll just show you what I was looking at now uh, since I know for sure there was enough for retracement. When I, so here's our A to B line out there. So just right there. So you can see if I just move this over to the C point, which was the high of the trading session of the next day on October the 4th, we're more than a one-to-one. -one. In fact, right now we're sitting at the 1 to 1.272 expansion. So pearls, you're looking for a long. Uh, so if you see a bullish reversal candle, that will generate a buy the D point. Mark on your chart, notate on here, you right now have resistance at the bottom of the profile. We're trading below that at 2 uh, 1735. And we have resistance at 22096 out there. Um, so uh, so that's where any counter trend move could could end. Not saying that it will. We need two consecutive bars below at 21735. The weekly time frame chart shows that price is trading with inside its bullish structured profile. And its buy zone is between 20882 and 21504 out there. Again, I would still wait for that daily buy the D point bullish reversal candle to then go ahead and get that confirmation that price is likely to rally. Uh, so that's what I see with regard to Tesla Pearls. Hope that helps you out. And thanks for your request. Johnny D wants to take a look at Pfizer. PFE is that ticker symbol. So let's pull those charts up. And Johnny is long from the 27 area out there. Um, so what is this doing? What is this doing? So on a monthly time frame, 
you have a consolidation with inside its profile. And that range between 2677, 3140. Both those levels have been tested. Both those levels have rejected. So there's your bigger picture. So what that says is, hey, the better place to uh, your loan from 27, 2677 would be a place where you'd want to add if price got down there. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, what do we have here? We've got a nice momentum indicator bottom. That went ahead and confirmed on the week of May 3rd. And then that turned into an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. I don't know that we've really attained the price projection level. Let's just take a quick peek here. Let's draw in the line from A to B. Go ahead and do that. Okay. And then we're just simply going to move this over to where the C point would be at this moment in time. And uh, no, we're not even. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I misdrew that. I meant to do this. There we go. Stevie, get your act together. All right, so uh, well, I take that back. So it did form. It did complete that one-to-one -one move out there. There was no bearish reversal candle that formed. Doesn't really matter at this stage in time. We know the pattern existed. We are trading on a weekly basis between profile 28.10 to 29.35 out there. So now to the daily time frame. On a daily time frame, price is tested support. That's a 28.72, and that's the level, Johnny, that I'm sure you'd like to see price hold. So would I. It's not. A, it's an equally balanced profile. So I can't make any other comments. If price gets below 28.72, that just suggests the next battle would be 28.56. If price got below that, then the next battle would be a 28.40, and then you'd be watching that TD9 count bottom pattern out here, as well as how how price is moving into that. If it's doing it with more than 29 million shares, Pfizer might be communicating to us that it's going to get back into that, that 2677 level out there. This is day number four to the downside consecutively for Pfizer. If we take a look at its charts out here, just understand it's Texas two-step. Uh, day number four, the last time we got there was back here on October 3rd, led to a nice rally. Uh, time before that was bar number five to the downside. Um, this really has not, when we take a look at this chart out here, Johnny, this looks more like a consolidation pattern than anything else out there, even though it's got that daily TD9 count bottom out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at the Pfizer charts. Hope that helps you out. As always, thanks for your request. We're going to go take a look at the U.S. dollar. This is for Dude inside the Tiger's Den. And Dude is saying he sees resistance at 104. And I couldn't agree with you more. That resistance at 104 is really coming from the daily time frame chart. Let's pull this back. Now, um, when I take a look at this U.S. dollar index chart, it's not getting a live data feed right now. Uh, but it was uh, it was live as of uh, a, a little bit ago. But here's your TD9 count top. That formed on July 30th. That is your resistance point. That top, the high of that top is 104.16. If price closes above that, then we head higher. We go back towards that, that swing point from June 28th. And that's in the range of 105.14 to 105.43. Now, the U.S. dollar index may form a TD9 count top between tomorrow and Friday out there. So there is a potential that we're going to see at least some type of short-term top with a retracement back to support. And support right now would be at 103.10 out there. That's what I see really when I take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Another level of resort uh, of resistance out here is a TD9 count breakdown level on the weekly time frame. That's at 104. 48. So yes, you are correct. Uh, dude, you've got uh, significant resistance inside the U.S. dollar index in that 104 area. But of course, to really understand the U.S. dollar index, as opposed to take a look at its charts, you really have to take a look at what's going on inside the euro, the yen, and the pound. The euro has bar number eight. So this may form a TD9 count bottom between today and Thursday. And, the, uh, and that's about it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Hetty Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97, and with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the stock charts here for GE Vernova Inc. out here. Uh, as you can see, we don't have really a ton of data. In other words, the monthly chart, we can see this began trading in March of 2024. So the monthly chart is basically useless to us. There's no data out there to, his, uh, to assist us. Now, uh, there's earnings tomorrow out here. And you can see on a weekly basis, last week we completed a TD9 count top. But again, not enough data to produce an oscillator and change line and profile levels are way down below. So that's not really going to assist us. This is suggestion though. We should not be surprised to see a move lower. Now on a daily time frame chart, let me just open this up, see if we really have a legitimate wave seven top out here and the black numbers. And we do. So this also does have a daily wave seven top out there that was confirmed on the trading day of uh, October 18th. What we have right now, ELO, is a consolidation with inside its profile. So I would say your downward support level would be down at 262.18. Resistance, you know, I'd say if you closed above that wave seven top, even if you tick above it, you're going to negate that signal. And that it is 281.37. Um, if price were to close below 262, you know, then we'd be looking at potentially move back to the 197.38 level. That's a TD nine count breakout area. So that's what I see. We take a look at Vernova Inc. out there. That's for ELO inside the Tigers, and they do have earnings tomorrow. So pay attention to those levels that we took a look at. Maybe that will be of assistance. Duncan Steve wants to take a look at the semis out here. SOXX is the ticker symbol. Right now, it's testing profile support. That's really a key level to watch because if price were to close below it, it being 227.20, it would add to the idea of a further move lower out there. But right now, price is just testing support. I don't see any kind of a topping pattern out here. Um, so just uh, just normal. But if you do close below profile support, in this case here for two consecutive days, then you would have a profile change in trend. And that would open up a move lower. Move lower to where? That's a really great question out here. Because on the daily time frame, you know, the next level of support I've got is at 201. Um, so I'm not going to make that call. I could make that call. The weekly time frame, <laughs> the next level of support is down. And this looks like, so it just is trading with inside its profile. And where it's found resistance, this is a bearish structured profile. It's found at the beginning of that sell zone. The beginning of the sell zone was at 237.49. The top of that sell zone, 259.80. So we know that strong resistance. I'd say that if price started trading, uh, Duncan, below last week's low out there, that would be a signal 
that this is going to move lower. Last week's low, 225.72. TD9 count, Roadsman indicator top on the monthly time frame, but price holding support nicely. That green oscillator didn't change. And yes, we're trading below it just slightly right now, but it's, you know, we still have more time left in the month out there. This is only the, uh, yes, it was only the first day on a daily time frame uh, to the uh, downside, if you will. And, uh, uh, today is likely to be bar number two. Now, if we take a look at the SOXX, they've been strong like bull, so to speak. Let's open up this set of charts out here. What do we see? We've seen retracements of two days, of three days. So you can easily get a bottom today or tomorrow uh, inside of SOXX. So I hope that helps you out. And Denkin, thanks so much for your request. Uh, Brent wrote in, and Brent would like to take a look at G triple R out there. So let's get those charts up on the uh, screen out here. Sounds like a ranch to me, G triple R, but that's not it. G triple R is Gorilla Technology, and Brent's question is, you know, how high do my charts suggest that this rally could uh, could uh, go? Brent, on the weekly time frame, you are in bar number nine right now. That suggests we should at least get a short to intermediate term top between this week and next week. Now, if we take a look at today's price in action, it ain't today. Price negated yesterday a TD9 count top. So that pattern is now gone. It looks like it's triggered an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Yeah, it most certainly has. That price objective, that's a nice thats a nice price objective, it looks like to me. Let's just go ahead and give that to you. So we'll draw it from that Roads Mentum indicator. Well, I grabbed the wrong tool. i got to fix this problem out here. Now we got the right tool. So here's our A to B line, which is going to be that TD9 count top. I'm just simply going to now move that over to the retracement after that TD9 count top, and that's going to give us an A to B equals CD pattern that would give us a daily price projection up in the $6 area. Now, the B point uh, would have been that TD9 count top had volume of 1.3 million shares. Yesterday was passed with 1.9 million shares. So you do have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Now let's go back and take a look at that weekly chart. So this is bar number nine. This would suggest to me that the top won't take place if it were to take place until next week. Perhaps that's when we're going to get a uh, buy, sell the D point pattern on the daily time frame, which gets us up towards that 618-ish area out there again. So just the daily and the weekly that are providing us with information out there. Brent, always good to hear from you as well. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Phil wants to take a look at the GE. So not GEV, but GE. So we take a look at this, and Phil would like to add to his position. So here you've got a nice Rhodes-Mentum indicator uh, top out here. That formed about uh, last week sometime. Today you got a nice big gap to the downside, trading below the bottom of its daily profile. Now where it may have found support out here, Phil, because on a daily basis, it will tell you and I that price should go target 162.23. But that's not what I'm saying. The reason I'm not saying that is because price right now is testing the top of its weekly profile. And that'd be the first level of support since price had been closed, had closed above it for about a month plus. That being 177.20. That's the level for you to be watching you'd like to add. If price close below that 177.20 level, then that suggests that pull back to the 162.23. And the reason it suggests that is because you have a buy zone on the weekly time frame that exists between 155.60 and 163.70 out there. Uh, the monthly time frame retracement would take us back towards that 160 level as well. So right now, just watch 177.20. That can be support out here for GE. Or if you're wondering why has price found support, well, it's the top of that weekly profile. So thank you as well for writing in. Let's go take a look at Hector. Wants to take a look at AEM. And it's really the A to B equals CD patterns that Hector is interested in. Let me see if I've actually got those charts up here on our screen. And I do. Now, the only issue with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern with regard to AEM, and it's with regard to many of the uh, stocks with inside the GDX is TD9 count tops out there. And today is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top. I know that wasn't your question, but I certainly want to make sure, which I'm sure you already know about, and that's going to complete tomorrow. The only question is, when we took a look at gold in the uh, beginning of that show, is because of the wars that are going on in capital fleeing out of war regions, that's Europe as well as it is in uh, in the Middle East, we're at new all-time highs, and since those skirmishes aren't coming to an end, maybe the technical, maybe the technical tools here are not really set up to. Uh, they're set up to say, hey, maybe we get a caution sign, and we get a sideways move, but not some kind of significant top out there. So that's what I see when I take an AEM on its daily time frame. Weekly time frame is saying I'm bullish. The monthly time frame is saying I'm 
uber bullish out here. And those are the signals on the monthly time frame, the weekly time frame. Well, the weekly didn't want well, to populate, are suggesting that really this daily TD9 count top that we're likely to see and experience here inside the GDX may just lead to a sideways move. But you did ask about the A to B equals CD patterns. I'm going to go ahead and uh, change charts. Um, well, we're about to run out of time here. Let me switch over to one other request, see if I've got it out here. I don't, Let me, but I can populate it. FXI is for G, uh, GTE. And uh, what I'm going to do, Hector, for you is we'll close out the show, the show looking at any A to B equals CD patterns inside of AEM. With regard to FXI, it's got a nice TD9 count bottom. It's trading with the side of bullish structured profile. It closed today above 3179. Suggest to move to the 3304, the 3381 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. Let me get that black screen fired up here. We're going to take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns inside of uh, Agnico Eagle out here. So I've got the daily out here. And this is really the daily A to B equals CD. But notice here that the retracement on the B to C leg was only 31%. And these are you like to get to at least a 0.382. But nonetheless, out here, what we do have is an A to B equals CD price projection on a daily time frame that will get us up to 9014. We take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The only weekly time frame chart that I would use here is really what's displayed on the monthly side. So I've left this. If you take a look at the retracement here on a weekly time frame, oops, the heck. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, 
weekly time frame, you'll see that that retracement was only 24%. So that's not the A to B equals CD. The only one on the weekly that is out here that I see right now is really the one that's matched here on the uh, monthly. So I wanted to be able to show that. You can see here this suggestion to move up to its all-time high. That all-time high came in in September of 2020 out there. The volume on that was 29 million shares. On a monthly basis, we're moving into it right now with 32 million. So 32 is going into 29 out there. That is a beautiful thing. This suggests a run up to the 92.15 level, the 1 to 2, A to B equals CD pattern out there. So hope that helps you out, uh, Hector. We had a request to take a look at what the question is. Let me switch back to the white background charts. Uh, can I give a view as to the Dow Diamonds for the rest of the day out there? And to do that, I just simply will go back again to the uh, charts we took a look at on the 60-minute time frame basis. First, I would say if the Dow is going to further its rally, you need to see the NQ close above resistance. That's at 25.16.25. So far, that's acted as resistance. A close above that would be a bullish signal. The uh, Dow equity future contract for its 60-minute time frame has a Rogemintum indicator bottom, has a TD9 count bottom. Its level of resistance is at 431.54. If price closed above 431.54, uh, Danny, that suggests higher price out there. That's what I would be watching. And lastly, let's see if I've got that chart there for XPEV, for GTE, and then we will have covered everything. Now I'm just guessing where that might be. It wasn't there, that's for sure. Was it here? Nope, that was Brent. Try real quickly. Nope, that's not it. Boy, I've tried. There we go. XPEV. Uh, it is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Support at 1037. Resistance at 1224 to 1286 level. Folks, have a, a terrific Tuesday, and I'll see you next Monday. Be safe out there, and thanks for all your help today. Really appreciate it.